let's just sew whatever. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making the Liberty Shoulder Bag by Needle and Anchor Supply Co. I had so much fun making this bag. I really, really love the shape. Um, I didn't do a whole lot to it as far as changes other than the way the main shoulder strap is attached. Um, only because I don't have those size O-rings, but yeah, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Okay, so we are going to get started on making the Liberty shoulder bag from Needle and Anchor Supply Co. I didn't intend to match my thread to my sweater, but it happened and I'm here for it. Uh, I am going to be changing up the hardware on this bag a little bit just because I don't carry the rings required to make it and um, I didn't have time to order it. Uh, so I am going to be using one inch rectangle rings and attaching the side connectors a little bit differently. Uh, and then we are also going to be using the, the top zipper hack that is available as an add-on. Um, so let's get started. My thread is full. My bobbin thread is full. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on my strap for the top. And so I've got double-sided tape down the center and I'm just gonna fold the long raw edges in towards the center. I am making my strap a little bit differently than in the pattern, but you can follow those directions, of course. I am using a size 19 needle. Um, I'm using Tex 80 thread, and that's from uh, geekyhardware.com. Uh, and the sewing machine that I use is a Juki DU1181N. I'm going to be using a stitch length of five, nice and long, and then we're just going to fold that on top of itself. And sew down each side. The vinyl I'm using is really stiff. This is the first time I'm working with it. It's just something I ordered through Alibaba. Um, so there's no, no one supplying it that I know of. But look how fun it is. It's so fun. All right, and then I'm going to kind of mix up from the directions. I'm just kind of going off the top of my stack. Um, and this is our main panels. This is the top fabric, and then this is the bottom fabric. Um, a slip pocket goes over this, so I love that she has taken note of that and helped reduce the use of like a really expensive fabric by offsetting it with that bottom panel. I think that's really awesome. And that gets attached a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then we're just going to flip this and top stitch through. Um, I would probably just top stitch through the lining. That'll help reduce any bulk. So right now I've got my seam laying flat and then I'm going to fold this piece over and top stitch here through those layers. And what I'm doing with my hand here is I'm pressing that seam down. So it might look like I'm just holding it, but my fingers are actually pushing down to help flatten out those layers. And then I'm just gonna repeat that on this side. And then I'm just going to 
gonna trim down all those extra little threads so they're not in my way later. And then we'll move on. Oh, it's so pretty. Super fun. I love that this looks like a cat head as well. Like all together, it's fun. Um, and then we can go ahead and get started on those front slip pockets. Um, I think it would be kind of fun to add like a zippered pocket to the front slip pocket as well. If you're someone that loves extra pockets, uh, I think this is big enough that you could do that. I roughly cut out my lining. So if it's looking like my lining is way bigger, that's why. Uh, I think that saves a lot of time for me. So I just kind of roughly cut it out to the same size. I'm gonna be sewing them together and trimming down any seam allowance anyway. So I'd rather just, you know, do it when I get here. I also think if you wanted to be a little fancier, you could add a little strip of piping to that top edge before sewing it all together. I think that could be really, really fun as well. Okay, so I'm gonna trim this down. It is a curve, so I'm using my pinking shears to help, um, help it shape when we turn it, but it's a low enough of a curve that if you didn't use pinking shears, I don't think you'd see like a huge difference, you know? And there are some options as far as the slip pocket. So make sure you read through the pattern before you start cutting. Um, there is a diagonal slip pocket that you can make as well, or instead of, I should say. So then we're gonna press these. I'm gonna flatten that seam. I'm kind of rolling it. And then I'm gonna use a little bit of steam and my iron to press this down. Use a lot of steam and then I can grab clips to help hold it in place if need needed. Uh, if you are using like all vinyl or all leather, you won't be able to use your iron unless you're um, doing it directly on the, the lining side, but you can still kind of roll that seam in between your fingers and press. You can see it's kind of holding its shape already, but just so it's nice and crisp, I'll use my iron and lots of steam. It's still warming up, so And I feel like waterproof canvas has a tendency to make the themes a little bit, the themes, <laughs> the seams a little bit thicker. Um, so that's another reason I like to cut it bigger, um, just so when I fold everything, it's, you know, I've got extra, it's not smaller, obviously. You know, you'd rather have a little too much than too little. And that's just something I've kind of learned over time with using it. Pretty. Now we can top stitch through that edge. And then I'm just going to go ahead and baste around the edges as well. If you want to add a nameplate, I would do it before basting all of that, of course. And if you wanted to add that um, zippered pocket, you would want to do that before sewing these together. 
I am using waterproof canvas for the lining of the bag and that's available at fwdfabrics.com. And generally there are links in the description box of the video. Thank you so much to Alex for providing those. and then we'll just trim all of that down. Okay, so now we can baste the slip pockets onto the main panel. And I am just going to use clips to help hold that all in place. And you can, uh, Fold the center of all of these pieces if you would like to just verify they're all in the right order or location, I should say. And the pattern says you can use Decaville light or foam to interface the bag. And I did cut out foam. So that's what I will be using on these main panels. But I also think the Decaville light would be really nice. I mean, I always think Decaville light is nice. in place. Okay, so now it's time to add our foam. And I'm just going to spray baste it to hold it for now. But we're going to be riveting through the slip pocket in the front to help hold it in place. Um, so that's what I'm going to use to make sure my foam doesn't like move around since it's um, outside of the edges. If you are using a material that you feel comfortable um, interfacing it, like actually fusing it, you can do that. But we're gonna be adding rivets to this slip pocket right about there to make sure that it doesn't like fall open too wide, which I think is a really great idea. Uh, if you do not have rivets, you can also just um, kind of back and forth tack stitch it. Um, but I'm gonna go half an inch from that top edge and two inches from the inside and just make a little mark. So two inches in, half an inch down, make a little mark. And then I'm gonna be using my two millimeter hole punch and my double face nine millimeter rivets. Just make a little hole. So I like to put the post through the back and then put the cap on the front. We'll do that to both sides of the bag. And then you're going to set the rivet with a double face rivet setter. Hello to sleeping Dorothy. May she rest until I'm done with this bag. <laughs> okay. 
didn't quite set that one all the way. I've got all this vinyl in the way. And there's nowhere else for it to go in this darn basement. That is so cool. I love the idea of that because otherwise it's just like a really wide open slip pocket. Um, and I really enjoy that we used rivets because those are less likely to come undone than if we were to like tack stitch it. So we'll just repeat that on the other main panel. And let's continue working on the exterior and get our gusset ready to go. So I've got my bottom panel here. I've interfaced it with Decaville Heavy and a little bit of foam. I just used a piece of double-sided tape to hold the foam in place. Uh, I don't think you would need to add purse feet, but if you wanted to, um, adding two might be kind of cute. But we are going to actually, so I'm using the cotton, not cotton, but the canvas fabric for my side panels. So I think I might try to use my iron really quick to interface it with the foam. Yeah, let's do that really quick. Awesome. And I have the best luck adhering foam using steam and just moving somewhat quickly if I'm using my iron and not my heat press. Um, otherwise, just using the heat press works great. <laughs> I am going to use clips because the foam is making it kind of squishy and thick. Um, using my normal hair clips isn't as easy to do. I just want to make sure those are lined up. We're going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Matching up those edges. And then I'm just gonna top stitch this. Maybe I'll top stitch it open or maybe not at all. Cause like it doesn't wanna lay the other way. So we'll just top stitch it this way. And I really haven't changed my stitch length since I started um, making the handle. I feel like that's such a personal preference stitch length. Some people like a really short stitch. Some people prefer something a little bit longer. I'm definitely of the mind that I like a little bit longer of a length. Especially when you're working with vinyl. So I'm keeping that seam flat and flipping it over, and then I'm just gonna top stitch through the gusset piece side. So I wouldn't say that's normally where I'd do it. I usually like to do my top stitching on the contrasting fabric. However, I just don't think this vinyl is gonna allow me to do that. So I figured, eh, why not? Um, so this is going to be my strap connector piece. It is the same exact piece listed in the pattern. However, we're not gonna be laying it that way as suggested in the pattern where we then slide our strap into because like I said in the beginning, I don't have that hardware. So I'm gonna use some double-sided tape down the center and we're just gonna make some regular old strap connectors I wouldn't recommend adding this into the seam, the top seam of this bag. Where did my scissors go? Um, because, it's always with my duct tape. Um, it's gonna make it really, really bulky to top stitch. So let's just not, let's not even say we did, let's just, just not. So folding that into the center so it's now a one inch wide piece and then I'm going to cut it at four inches um, 
And then we'll use a couple more pieces of double-sided tape. We're gonna attach our connector and then we'll attach that to the bag. And when I make my crossbody strap connectors, I don't like to fold it in half. I like to do like two thirds and then one third so that if we want to add a rivet, there's plenty of room. It's not going to break down here and then your rivet is useless and your fabric could pop open. Use a clip to help hold that in place. So you can see there's like a third and two thirds. And then a piece of tape there. place this in the center of the gusset maybe two inches down yeah that seems right to me any closer and you might have issues top stitching and it's um, not a very wide gusset piece so I don't want the um, hardware to get caught in my seam allowance or anything like that. So then I will top stitch that down. And if you want to sew a box stitch, you can do that, um, but sometimes I think just one way looks good. And then we'll repeat that on the other side, two inches down from the center. Again. You want to make sure that you don't leave um, clips on vinyl for too long. Fold my gusset in half and mark out the bottom center. Just a teeny tiny little snip. And that is our exterior ready to go. I am gonna, instead of putting my whole exterior together right now, 
I'm gonna finish the lining and then we'll put it all together. So normally for the lining pieces, I would just increase my seam allowance, but what Carissa has done is designed it so that your lining pieces are already smaller. So you don't need to adjust your seam allowances or anything like that because she has done that work for you. So we're gonna do right sides together, working on that bottom gusset. And it's up to you if you want to top stitch it the same way or if you want to just leave it on top stitch. Um, just going to go ahead and top stitch it. I decided not to add any slip pockets to the lining, but I will be adding a zippered pocket. However, I won't be doing it like the pattern um, just because I like the way I make zippered pockets, but if you would like to learn a new technique, it is included in the pattern. So I'm gonna fold this in the center. So the pattern pieces, you can see that there's this like little dip here. Um, she, like I said, has designed it so that your lining is made smaller without having to adjust your seam allowances or anything like that, so. Very cool. So I'm gonna work on my zippered pocket really quick. Um, this is a nine inch, yes, a nine inch zippered pocket. So I'm gonna fold my main panel in half. And we, like I said in the beginning, are doing the zippered top closure. So I'm not going to be worrying about adding any magnetic snaps. Although you could absolutely do both. I mean, it's a little bit overkill, but not a huge issue, you know? So I'm just gonna really quick mark out my nine inch zipper. Uh, the template I'm using is from Tops and Bobbins. Um, it's their zipper cut out template that's designed by Kiera. Leaving an inch or more at the top. And then I'm gonna lay that in place. And now I will shorten that stitch length to a four. I do think the way the zipper pocket is instructed in the pattern is easier for beginners. Like you're not going to mess it up. So, well, you are, you could. It's very similar to the Taste Deal Tote from Sonar um, with the overlay and then you cut away and then you add your zipper and I couldn't wrap my head around it then and I'm not going to try to now. <laughs> so I'm going to flip this through and press with my iron. And so the way I do this kind of pocket is I will roughly top stitch my zipper into place. zipper pull in. And honestly, like you don't have to add the overlay, but I love that she's included it. 
Um, but then you lay this over top. I'm going to use a little bit of double-sided tape. And the overlay included in the pattern is a little bit wider and tall. It's a little bit taller, I should say. It's not wider. Um, so that, again, it's really beginner-friendly. I like this tape. Come on, where are you? up my sides and now I am matching up there we go trim off my extra zipper here and then you're going to sew around the zipper overlay. So I like to start on the inside. to get close to my zipper pull and then zip zip it out of the way. And then I'm going to just jump up to the top and top stitch around that outer edge. machine kind of in this area here you can see it didn't quite catch the vinyl which is a bummer it just kind of sloped off with the thickness of this vinyl so I'm just kind of going over it to catch it again and I'll pull all my threads to the back and trim That one's pretty much stuck. are going to be using this to turn through 
so we want to leave the bottom open. And I just roughly cut out my zipper pocket here, so I'm going to trim down the bottom a little bit. And I'm going to flip this up. And you want to make sure that you catch both sides of the lining. And then we're getting towards the bottom end here, so we're going to flip that up. And then I'm gonna flatten that. And then you can um, finger press or use your iron. So that's our lining pieces completed since I'm not adding that slip pocket. So then we'll just work on our top zipper panel. So I've got my zipper panel pieces here. I have two pieces cut from my lining and two cut from the exterior. I'm gonna put these all wrong side up. And we're going to fold the edge over by I believe about half an inch. And I like to do that by throwing everything on the floor <laughs> by using half inch wide double sided tape just along all the pieces. to me otherwise I can't see as well I'm trying to do um, better camera angles for you all to see with from from the angle it makes sense um, but it can make my life sewing a little bit more complicated but I love you and you're worth it so know that I did cut my lining a little bit wider just because like I mentioned earlier the waterproof canvas when it's folded or in the seams like somehow it shrinks I don't know it doesn't actually shrink but it can just get a little bulky bulky so now we can prep our zipper which I've thrown on the floor let me grab that And we're going to turn the top of the zipper at an angle. So hopefully you can kind of see how I do that. I just kind of bring this edge up to the teeth and that's going to kind of curve off into your seam allowance so that you can't just 
fully unzip your zipper. So you're gonna do that to both sides and I like to baste stitch it into place. I wish there was an easier way, like it, like some kind of staple trick or something, I don't know, but this works fine. Just to make sure it's even, I like to zip my zipper up. Just kind of hold that in place. Awesome. And then we'll take one of our exteriors and I'm just, double-sided tape. I can't get away from it. You can decide which way you want your pieces to go. I like that very much. And so I want my zipper to be in the center of those pieces. So I'm going to take my little eighth inch wide double-sided tape And it kind of helps you remember which way you want things to go. So that's nice. And then my lining, it doesn't matter, just so long as it's right sides up. I just interfaced um, with a woven interfacing, this canvas. Didn't want it to be too thick, but it can't be too thin on my industrial. So I'm gonna unzip my zipper and lay that in place. You wanna start about an eighth of an inch or so from that edge. That's about a quarter of an inch, but whatever. And then if you're not using tape, go ahead and baste that in place. And then we will attach our lining. And that's all in place and I'm gonna start an eighth of an inch from the outer edge and stop an eighth of an inch from that outer edge. And that's just so you don't see any of your stitching from the other side. And then I'm gonna fold this up and over and we'll top stitch around all four sides. And then I am top stitching around this. All sides. And you can see I've got that extra bit of lining that's okay, because we're just going to trim it off. Just like that. And then I like to zip my zipper up to lay the piece, and then I'll unzip it again so we don't have to worry about it being in our way. I'm going to lay that down matching up that edge. And my zipper kind of curved a little bit, had a little wonkiness to it, so I just straightened it out. We'll unzip it. And again, if there's any weird spots, you can kind of lay it flat one more time. And you want to put right sides together. So you can see I've got the right side of my zipper touching the right side of my exterior. 
And then I've got right sides of my lining touching the right sides of the exterior, but the wrong side of the zipper. And could that be any more complicated? I mean, yes, but it's not. Okay, and then we'll press that using our iron again. And come back and top stitch, and this time I'll film the whole thing. down that excess lining. And then zip it up. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I love it. And then I'm going to mark the center of the panel. love this fabric so much. Wouldn't it make a great vinyl? I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and start putting our exterior and linings together. I've got my center marked out. On this piece here and we do need to leave an opening for the lining to come through I'm I feel like the the birthing hole is big enough but there is a, a little hint in the pattern that says you can also um, leave an opening in that side along that side to help um, turn the bag and then close it off through another, the other. Wow, words, Lauren, do you have them? Do you know what they are? Have you heard of them before? <laughs> you could leave a larger opening in the bottom of the lining to turn the bag through and then close it through your zippered pocket like like we do sometimes, you know? What a perfect fit. Love it. We're just going to follow around that seam. I am gonna go ahead and leave an opening in my lining to turn the bag through because this vinyl might easily get a hole in it. So couldn't hurt. So I'm just gonna jump up, leave a decent opening here. Oy, oy, oy. Jump over to this side. Make sure your zipper pocket is out of the way. Add two zippered pockets to this bag if you wanted.
And this side we can sew around the entire thing. And if you're going to sew with your gusset up, like I just did on one side, I would recommend doing it on the other as well. So I've got my bottom in place and then we'll work on the top and then we'll figure out the rest. And what I do is just kind of pinch the layers together to make it all fit nicely. And if you need to trim any excess seam allowance, now would be a wonderful time. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add, no, I won't add the zipper panel to this part, I'll add it to the other. I am folding my exteriors in half and you wanna snip the top center and the bottom center since we're adding that zippered gusset. Zippered gusset, no. We're adding a zipper panel to the top to close it. However, we are adding the gusset to the bag. So lining up that center snip. Grab a few more clips for this.
Mm -mm. Whoa. Oh my goodness, look at that. Like, I did not line up this panel, of course, but like the print almost kind of matches up in a way. Oh, so close on this side. <laughs> That's fun. I did, I didn't, I don't, I don't try to do that. Not often anyway. Oh, I'm loving my combination of picks for this bag. All right, and then we're going to clip the other side into place. I clipped it I caught that foam in that clip as well so make sure you're not doing that since it's not meant to be in that seam it's cut a little bit shorter so when I grabbed it it made it so I couldn't suit situate these pieces together as easily just a little See how I've caught it here. I don't necessarily want to. If your foam is like fully fused and it's clipped there, I don't think you'll have an issue that way. But since mine is kind of free floating, it could be that the exterior fabric is kind of sloped, but the foam stays straight. So I'm, I wouldn't be able to catch everything which I'm sure was an unnecessary explanation, but you never know. Okay. Oh, might be time to change my bobbin soon. And kind of hear it. Robin's getting real low, big guy. like we made it. Oh, what a fun bag. Okay, let's just hurry up and get this done because I'm super excited to see it. Okay, so I'm trying to think of how yeah, we want our zipper panel right sides together on the panel. Right sides together. So if you're at this step and you have your exterior and you're attaching your zipper, please make sure that your zipper isn't facing up because you're doing it wrong. Okay, I've got that clipped into place. I'm gonna unzip it 
just so it's a little bit easy to maneuver. And I'm just gonna quickly base that into place. Matching the curve of the bag. And then you don't wanna come in too far. Oh, there's the bobbin. Yep. <laughs> from that initial stitch, um, just because then you're gonna run out. Or you might see that basting stitch when we top stitch the bag if you're like way too close. zip it to attach it to the other side. Find my center and clip it into place. And then I'll unzip it. And I've left my zipper really long so that top stitching it is going to be easier because in the end we can trim the zipper down. Trim it down. So what I'm doing to help me hold that in place on the curve is using those clips and I'm pushing down on both edges while holding the clip slightly open. So that like it's holding it in place. And I mean, it's kind of the same as me doing this, but using the clip instead. I don't know if it's easier or what, but it's working. Okay. So then we will stick our zipper inside the bag and trim down any of those little threads And then we'll add our lining. Okay. So I have already flipped my lining right side out and um, unzipped my zipper all the way. You may want to zip it back in just a little bit. Oh wait, no. <laughs> I thought I was like sewing around, I don't know. So if you know which way is front versus back, you can slide this in whichever way you wanna go. I'm not really worried about it. Slide this in. And start by lining up your gusset pieces and any center snips that you have.
this clipping the rest of the way around. I feel like everything is fitting there nicely. Okay, and then I'm probably gonna sew around the inside to um, top stitch it. Cause I don't think, yeah, that'll be the easiest. Okay, I'm switching my stitch length to about a 4.5 and finding a good area to start. And then you wanna just make sure that you're catching the exterior and the lining and the zipper panel or sewing around the top. And then as we get to that corner, we want to pivot. Couldn't hurt to add more clips. Pivot around the other side of the corner. Make sure our lining is matched up. So using my cylinder arm would be much easier for this but I don't really want to mix that into tutorials. I don't know, that doesn't seem fair because then it's like, okay, well, how am I supposed to achieve this with the machine I have, you know? Unless you have a domestic, in which case, like, I guess you're just enjoying watching. I don't, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below what machine you have. If you make bags or if what you sew, I'd love to know. Always curious. Okay, let's turn it. issue turning this because of the vinyl I use um, but what's nice is since we use that waterproof canvas along the bottom of that main panel it's gonna be a little bit easier so that's nice so I am using the hole we left in the opening not in the zipper pocket Possible not to dent these like holographic vinyls. snip those a little bit, but not an issue. 
I'm going to then grab my zipper pocket and grab my open lining hole. And pull the lining back through and we will sew that up and then the zipper pocket. So we'll line up the center snip. And then clip all of this back together. We wanna to make sure we keep that nice curve. And I like to start back stitching kind of in the seam allowance above where my stitching ends. Catch it and then continue. And then back stitch outside the seam allowance again. And I'm pushing the lining back in. And we will close off this turn hole. I might need to use my iron to help me fold all of that in since it's so much wider than I'm used to. Just used to a little seven inch pocket. So I'm just gonna fold in and clip. zip up my lining zipper. I know that that's all caught and sewn properly and then we're going to press the lining into the corners. And then I'm just going to kind of massage the edges of the bag to top stitch it. I'm going to clip it zipper in. I think it'll sit a little bit better. Double check that it zips nicely. Very nice. How pretty is that? I mean, it'll be prettier once the clips are off. All right, let's finish. So let's go ahead and top stitch. I'm gonna change my stitch length to a five and we want to unzip this zipper pretty much all the way. Um, and then I am going to sew it again from that lining side. You could flip the bag out if you wanted to. Um, I just don't think that will work 
with the vinyl I've used. And literally that's the only issue that I'm having right now is because of the vinyl. Yeah. Sorry, Dorothy did not nap the whole way through the bag. So she's awake and hanging out. Oh, you think the cylinder arm would have been a better choice for top stitching? Yeah, you're probably right. Should we, can we finish this though? Okay. No, get out of your mouth, please. take it. No ma'am. I'll take it. Thank you. going slowly around the outer edge making sure that my layers stay in place and as I'm getting to the zipper panel again I am slowly going to walk over that staying along that outer edge. Came in a little too far there. It's okay. No ma'am. No ma'am. Those will give you ouchies. Tension's fine, thank you though. Dorothy, the button literally says no hands, and then it shows blood.
Okay, so then we will pull out, pull those threads and tie them off if need be. Make sure we snip them nice and close. Dorothy, will you hold this? She got all those snips, Mom. And then we'll add zipper end hardware as well as our strap. Uh, I love that curve. Such a pretty shape. So I'm going to trim my zipper down quite a bit, but we still want it to open fairly wide. So I'm going to trim it probably to about here. So I'm going to have like two to three inches hanging over the edge. Here you want this? Okay, so now we're going to add that zipper end hardware. I'm just gonna fold the end under a little bit and slide on the end cap. Make sure to push it all the way down. And then it came with a screw that we're going to insert. You can use a little bit of glue if you want. And then just screw that in there. And you want to make sure it's flush with the end of the end cap. And then you can tuck that inside. And then we will grab our strap. And again, if you're making it uh, as the pattern is intended, your side connectors are going to look a little bit different. But I'm just going to slide this strap through and fold it over. And repeat that with the other side. And you can kind of adjust it to whatever length you might want it to be. This will probably be Dorothy's bag. She's really enjoying the colors. Um, you could even make it into a crossbody bag. That would be kind of fun. We'll clip that in place and then you'll rivet that on. Okay, I'm going to use the Tandy Leather Hole Punch to punch the holes in the side here. Just because this is really thick vinyl. Oh, Dorothy. Hold on, it's okay. And you could add multiple rivets if you wanted. If you're using this method, of course. If you don't go all the way through one side, you can undo this or just kind of go through the side again. And then we'll insert the cap through one side, the post, and then insert the cap on the other. All right, so then we're gonna repeat that on the other side. So we've got both rivets inserted and then I'm going to use my press to set that rivet. Yep. And there is our bag completed. So I definitely made the strap longer than probably intended, but I kind of like it. Um, I think it's a fun balance too. Um, and then it's kind of a nice long shoulder bag, or you could even, well, for a smaller person, it might be a good crossbody bag, but, um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I. I'm really happy with the shape of this bag. It isn't quite as big as I had thought it was going to be. It's a really nice medium sized bag. And I could definitely see this being a really great um, crossbody bag as well. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I know Dorothy enjoyed crashing it. 
Um, if you're not already, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment below, let me know if you're going to make this bag, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Yay! Can you clap?